Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. This is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 7. As you know, the GED Math Test consists of several parts. An arithmetic part, basic and applied, algebra and geometry. I wanted to provide more value to you in these videos that I'm making and I've decided to switch things up a little bit so each test is going to contain questions within each of these sections. Let me know what you think about this in the descriptions below. I just feel that when you are reviewing for an exam it's really important to be reviewing everything all the time otherwise you risk you know just studying algebra or just studying geometry. Okay so let me know what you think. With that being said, uh, let's get started. So questions one to five are going to be basic arithmetic questions. And what we're going to talk about today in this section is what you do when you have to multiply or divide numbers that might have a positive or a negative sign. And these are the two rules that you have to remember. If you are multiplying or dividing numbers that have the same sign, your answer is going to be positive. If you're multiplying or dividing numbers that have different signs, your answer is going to be negative. Let me show you with an example. So here we have a negative 1 times negative 5. So we have a negative and a negative. According to our rules, these are the same sign, okay, so our answer should be positive. And that's exactly what it is, positive 5. Same thing happens when we're dividing. So if you have a negative 10 divided by 2, so we have a negative value and we have a positive value, so they have different signs, your answer is going to be negative, negative 5. And that's all there is, folks, to adding, or excuse me, multiplying or dividing numbers that might have different signs. Okay, so let's go ahead and do five problems together, and I'm going to absolutely blast through these. So minus 6 divided by 2 we have negative and a positive number, different signs, so what's the answer? Absolutely, negative, negative 3. M negative 5 times negative 10, excuse me, negative 2, so we have a negative and a negative, same sign, what's the answer? Positive, positive 10. Negative 50 divided by 10, we have a negative and a positive, different signs, so our answer will be negative negative 5. Negative 21 times 2 times negative 2, excuse me, so we have a negative and a negative, same sign, answer will be positive, positive 42. Okay, so you're getting the gist of this, I hope. Okay, final problem, negative 10 times 4, so we have a negative and a positive, different signs, so our answer will be negative, negative 40. And that is all there is, folks. Okay, so just to recap what we just learned. When you have to multiply or divide numbers that are either negative or positive, just remember these two rules. If those two numbers that you're either multiplying or dividing have the same sign, your answer will be positive. If they have a different sign, your answer will be negative. Okay, let's move on to do two questions of the applied arithmetic section. This first problem is what we call a setup problem. So in the GED, sometimes you'll find questions where they don't actually ask you for the answer. They want to know how you would set up a problem to solve it. Okay, these are called setup problems. The reason they do this is that when you go to college, if you decide to go to college after your GED, Sometimes your professors won't be so much interested in your answers, but in your ability to think and um, set up problems, uh, how you would solve them. All right, so Rick, Marta, and Phoebe are investment partners. They put $50,000 into an investment that pays an annual interest of 14%. Excuse me. At the end of the year, they split the interest evenly among the three of them. How much did Phoebe earn? In this problem, what you have to do is find out two items. The first thing is to find the interest that they earned. And second, you have to divide that interest between the three people who invested. So we said that we have an interest an investment of $50,000. So you would multiply that by 0.14. 
Uh, the reason you do this is because there's an interest rate of 14%. Okay, so if we write that in decimals, it would be 0.14. And that would give you the interest that was earned. And then you would divide that number by three. The reason you divide it by three is because we said that there's three people that are investing, Rick, Marta, and Phoebe. So if you wanted to know how, how much they earned, then you know, we said that they were going to divide the, the, the earnings equally, so you would divide it by three. So the answer here would be C. Question seven. If three of the 15 employees at a pizza parlor go on strike, what percentage of employees are striking? So whenever I do percentage problems, I always like to write a little grid like this. And the reason is that whenever they ask you any percentage question, they are going to give you three pieces of information and you have to find the fourth. So if you do this little grid and you, you know, put in your numbers in each of the boxes, it's going to be really easy to solve percentage questions. Why? Because this is actually equal to this equation. So the part divided by the whole is equal to percent divided by 100. So we know that there is a total of 15 employees at the pizza parlor. So 15 would be the whole, okay? So the bottom left number. And out of those 15 employees, the part, three of them are striking, okay? So number three would be the part. So there you go, you have your left part of your equation already set up. And then the question is asking you what percentage of employees are striking. So on the right side, you would write x divided by 100 because x, the percentage, is what they want you to find out. Okay, so if you see that if you do it this way, it's going to be super easy for you to solve any percentage problems. Okay, so how do we solve this now? So we would multiply across like that. On your left side, you end up with 300 is equal to 15x. And now what you have to do is that you have to isolate that x. How do you do that? Dividing by 15 on both sides. Why do you do that? Because when you do that, you can now on your left side cancel that 15 out. And that leaves you with x is equal to 20. Okay, so 3 of 15 employees is 20% of employees that are on strike. I hope that makes sense to you. If you have more questions on this, I have a whole 30 minute video going over percentage problems, which I will link in the description. Make sure you check it out. All right, I'm just gonna get a drink of water. Okay, so questions eight and nine are algebra problems. If 4x minus 5 is equal to 23, then what does x equal to? All right, so that's the number of the equation that you have. What I like to do is, first of all, tidy things up a little bit on the left side. So get rid of that negative 5. How would you do that? You would add 5. Why would you do that? Because 5 plus negative 5 is equal to 0. Um, so that would be a way of getting rid of that 5, that minus 5. And remember that if you add 5 on the left side, you also have to add 5 on the right side, okay? Whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other. So on the left side, those two numbers would cancel out, and then you would end up with 4x is equal to 28. How do we isolate that x? Well, we would divide by 4 on the left side, and by four on the right side. On the left side, that uh, four would cancel out, so we would end up with x is equal to seven. Let's say you're not very sure if you got that right. How could you confirm and check your work? Very easy, you would take that number and you would just plug it into your equation. So if we said um, four multiplied by seven instead of x, minus 5 is equal to 23. We know that 4 times 7 is 28, minus 5 is, is going to equal 23, right? So you have 23 is, is equal to 23. Okay, so you can see that this is a really simple and quick way to check your work. Question 9. 
If P is equal to 3, which of the following uh, inequalities contains the number P? And notice that in the answer, they're giving you a value x, and this is a little bit to confuse you, but this is actually very straightforward. Essentially, P is equal to x in this example, okay? So in what you would do is simply plug in the number 3 into each of these inequalities. Um, so I gave you the answer there, sorry. Um, what you would do is in the first example in A, you would plug in that number 3 where the x is, so you would say 3 is more than 4. Is that true? No, it is not. And the second one, uh, is 3 more than 7? Absolutely not. Um, then you would say 3 times 3 minus 3. Is that true? Absolutely not, because we would have 9 minus 3 uh, is less than 3, excuse me. And then finally, 3 is less than 5. That is absolutely correct. Our final question, question 10, is a geometry problem. And this uh, involves using um, perimeters. Okay, so the problem says uh, Leanne works in a park. The grounds are shaped like the triangle below. If she walks once around the perimeter, how much has she walked? And they give you a triangle with the yards that she has to walk um, here, what you have to remember is that the perimeter of a triangle, to get the perimeter of a triangle, sorry, what you have to do is to just simply add all this, the sides of the triangle. So you would have Leanne, and she's going to look like uh, an angry Viking, and she's going to walk that way for 500 yards, and then she's going to walk left for another 400, and then she's going to walk up to her starting point, another 300 yards, okay? That's the perimeter of a triangle. And to find it, as I said, all you have to do is add all the sides of the triangle. So in this case, our answer would be uh, 1,200 yards. All right, folks, and that's all for today. I hope you found some value. Let me know in the description below if you not like this new system of having questions for each part of the GED. Thank you so much for watching, and if you found any value and you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. <laughs> Have a terrific day, and stay positive and stay strong.